What's going on guys? So today, uh, I have five skateboard tips for beginners. And then after that, I'm just going to be free skating because I really need to warm up. I'm not warming up at all. That was horrible, actually. So yeah, let's get into that. So the first tip, not to mongo push. That's where when you push, you have your foot back here. Or let's say you ride normally with your left foot in front. You'd push with your right foot and then get back on like this. Don't push like that. It's called mongo. And I'm very sure people call you out on it. And it just doesn't look good. And if you put your foot too far back this time, let me redo that. That was not good. You can put your foot to the back, push and like absolutely die. So, yeah, don't push like that. Also, don't push with your right foot in front and then just do that. I don't know anyone who would do that. I haven't seen anyone do that. My friend used to, he pushes with his left foot in front, but he used to push Mongo with his left foot and then just get back on. Uh, it annoys me, but he doesn't do it anymore, but, all right, so the next tip, um, I'm not saying this to all of you, because sometimes I do it, like, like, when I can't hold my way, I can't hold my board another way, mall grabbing, holding it by the truck like this, um, I mean, at a skate park, I wouldn't recommend doing it with a lot of people, but you can do it when you're just, like, with your friend going to a spot, or you're at a skate park alone with like one or two people, including you. Pretty much three people at the max, cause, wow, that was nice. That's great. This is proof that I haven't done anything. But like, I don't do it at skate parks, but I do it when I'm like alone. Now I don't do it actually, cause it's the winter, so my trucks are cold. So I just have to hold it like in a really weird way like this with my hood over it because also if you hold your grip tape too much, if it's like really good like this, it can like make your thumb bleed and a lot of things. So yeah, that's that. So the third tip, don't put your board on the top of the coping of a ramp, like ready to drop in and then not go. Also, this is related to the next thing I'm about to say. Like, let's say you're going up the ramp and doing an axle stall, right? I'm doing an axle stall right now. Don't sit up there for eternities and in eternities, setting up, getting ready to go back down. And then you end up failing. So, like, I'm either keeping my board there, I'm just standing there. Also, don't put your board on the top of the coping when someone's coming up and doing their line. Like, let's say people are doing a line like rack to faking, tail tap feeble stall, stuff like that, and you have your board on the coping ready to go, maybe keep it back and hold it, wait till they finish, and then immediately stand there and be like, if you're dropping in for the first time, find a ramp that's no one, that no one's using, and it shouldn't be a ramp like this tall. I went on a ramp like, I don't know, uh, three feet or four feet, something like that. for no reason. Why? Why? There's no point in waxing something that you're not using. And if you overwax it too much, if you do that every day, 
and then someone finally decides to go on that obstacle, they could get hurt because it's overwaxed. And now that might seem not like a big deal, but if it's overwaxed, they might slip out and it'll probably like, they're not used to it. What if they're learning just how to ollie up onto it? Like not, not even moving. What? Move it in? Not even moving. What if they're just doing this? What if they're just coming forward onto it? They could slip out. And what if they're not wearing protective gear? So yeah. All right, next step is if someone is working hard on a trick and struggling, unless they ask you to do it, don't do it right in front of them. So I'm a beginner, I'm trying to have cap. I can't do it. I've been trying it for three session, sessions straight. And then someone just comes out of the mood. show them so they can like take the things that you did and put it onto their half cab don't do it because it can lower their self-esteem and then they stop doing that trick and then once they actually get the self-esteem they can't do it because like what if you just show up and do it when they're about to go that could have been the time that they would have landed it but no you went it's kind of like snaking snaking is where like you're in certain order like dropping in or something or doing something and then out of nowhere, you just come and get in front of the line. It's like cutting in line, pretty much. It's just not waiting for your turn or falling into someone. Like, they're all in, they're like trying a trick and they don't land it, like down the three stair or something. And they don't land it. But then you do and you roll over them. So, yeah. That's happened once. Well, not to me. And I didn't do it to someone. I saw it happen at skate lessons. Someone, some, this little kid was snaking. And yeah, it just didn't end up right. All right, so last and final thing, don't, there's, there's a difference between a beginner and a poser. A beginner is someone that likes to skateboard and actually commits and tries and doesn't go full on out buying the best boards right when they're learning. Like my first board wasn't even a skateboard, it was a long board. Well, technically. It was like a penny board, but with grip tape and it was bigger. It's so kind of like a cruiser, like this big. And then a poser is someone who like doesn't skate but acts but looks and acts like they do. Stuff like that, and like they wear skate merch, they buy a skateboard that's not even meant for skating, and then they just hang it up. Like, I'm not saying this to be mean, but my friend, is, you know, is kind of. I need to, need to get him to his senses, because he can only ollie. He, I gave him a board for his birthday, it was like 50 to 60 dollars. Uh, I've had this board, or no, I've had my other board for less than a day. And it looks like his that he's had for eight months. It's all scratched up and stuff. Well, barely. Like, this part of it is scratched up because I was doing board slides and stuff. But he's had it for eight months since, like, June or July or whatever. I don't know. And it's just now getting scratches. His sticker, because me and him have the same sticker, his is just getting the corners kind of peeled off. Look at mine. I put this on this morning. Look at it. It's not even... It's not even a rectangle anymore. You can't see the face. You can't see the words. All you can see is half of an E and most of the Y. So yeah, those are my skate tips. Uh, I was going to make also like kind of a waxing part of this video, but I don't have my wax, of course. So yeah, that's fun. I might just add one more in. And then I'll get to skating because, oh yeah, add one more in. Don't buy super expensive shoes and then not skate them. Because if you don't pay for the shoes, which I don't, I, I've never paid for the shoes, uh, yeah, you're just ruining shoes or just keeping shoes and not doing them at all. Like, look, I've had these shoes since Christmas. Look, they're losing, like, when you first get Vans, it's, like, bumpy um, where you scrape right here. It's not bumpy anymore. It's just starting to get squishy, like, on the part that you scrape. So, yeah, that's a minor one. I mean, when you're starting out as a beginner, like, you can't even only this high. 
I wouldn't recommend getting these Vans because they are $83. I'd recommend just getting like basketball shoes that are like flat on the bottoms. Or maybe if you can pay for those, get Vans because like I wouldn't recommend paying for all this stuff, this expensive Supreme board and your Thrasher outfit and your shoes and then you skateboard and then you fall once and then you say it's not for you. So then you just made your parents pay um, $220 for all that equipment that you're not even going to use anymore. So yeah, watch out for that stuff. When you're a beginner, get beginner stuff. Don't get, like, you don't even have to get metal trucks like these. Because what are they for? That's just adding weight on your board. You can't even grind yet. So it's just adding extra weight on your board that you don't need. Start out with, definitely don't get Spitfire wheels. Those are $40. Like, in a lot of skate progression videos, they're like, I got my first real board on the third month. What they mean by that is, like, at first they got, like, a board from, like, Walmart or something. They didn't get a pro board. But then once they progressed and realized, yeah, I'm actually going to skateboard for, like, five years or so. Then they realized and they commit to the deep step of spending all your money on skateboarding. I cannot inward heel flip. What is that? I don't understand. Okay, well now I'm going to be skating. I can't do anything. I was trying a front side full cab. I don't understand. It's like a bar. Yeah.
Before him, half cabs before him, uh, what else? Grinds before him. What is, what is this? What? I learned ramp, some ramp tricks before him. I learned the rock and roll before him. The drop in before him, because I did it on my kicker before him. Now, I bet he'll deny that, but if anybody sees him, it was me. <laughs> that was an inverted clip. statement in my how to, how to 180 video. When I made that video, I said put your scrape foot right here behind the bolts. No, no, no. No, no, no. Because when I do that, it adds too much scrape, which means too much force, and it pushes it over there. And I always landed primo because I, I scraped, and then it went like this, and I landed primo, but luckily it's one of those primos where you do it for a second and then go like that. So that was, that was a hard flip. So I pretty much did a hard flip. I wasn't trying to, but it, it's funny how I was actually trying to 180 with my body and I didn't because I scraped before I popped or whatever because the hard flip was like that. And then I was just in shock for the rest of the night. And then when I tried it out, I just did front side of the knee. But my hard flip is not the point. I said a false statement. You do not put your foot behind the bolts. I tend to put my foot right here covering these front bolts. Covering these front bolts. Even up to right here. Like this. I usually put them about right here. See, look, I'll show you the difference. First is going to be um, not covering the bolts, the way I said it in my other video. Probably because I was rushing, because 
I had to get ready for school. I had like five more minutes because I was just on my lunch break. But I finished lunch quickly, so dang it. Now the video's at 20 minutes. So now I'm going to have to save it and it's going to take two hours. And I have to go to skate lessons soon. So yeah, bye. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh.